The Premier League has already kicked off for the weekend. I'm very, very late making a video, but this is going to be a very short preview about the Liverpool v Bournemouth game. And it's a big game for us because we remain a game in hand on Man City, which is good because then it means that we can still go ahead, we can go back top of the league for now until they play whenever and they'll be a game ahead of us again. I don't know when it levels out in terms of games played and such like that, maybe around the cup games or something. I don't know. But that's not really important. It's more about the the gameplay for Liverpool. What? How can we get back to that, you know, the way we play? You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Like, how can we get the forwards firing again? How can we get the midfield in control again? And how can we get that defence a little bit more solid? Hopefully the answer to all three of those will be with the rumoured news that all of Jeannie Wijnaldum, Henderson and Trent, I think they trained the day before and they trained yesterday, which means that they could be in contention to play against Bournemouth, which is great if so. Trent, we miss him. Genie is unbelievable. He's the genie in a bottle, man. He is the genie in a bottle and he unlocks and helps Fabinho so much if he's playing. And obviously Jordan Henderson can help us out there as well. It obviously gives us a lot of options then in midfield and what we can do, making it more solid, which we're going to have to do against Bournemouth because Bournemouth, despite some of the struggles that they have, they can go out there and beat the bigger teams. They smashed Chelsea 4-0 and then Chelsea came out last week and beat someone 6-0 or 6-1 or whatever it was, something like that. So, I mean, Bournemouth, they can do it. They play good football. They've got a good manager. They've got a good footballing squad. And thankfully, because of the loan deal, Nathaniel Klein can't face us, which is great. Now, they've got Dominic Solanke there. I've got to be honest, don't know how much he's played. And then you've obviously got uh, Wilson. Don't know if he's still injured. They've got dangerous players though and they've been dangerous to us in the past and on our current form it would be poetic it would be written in the stars that it would be against us that Bournemouth turn up again and maybe get a victory and obviously we none of us want that to happen unless you're not a Liverpool fan then obviously you want that to happen if you look at social media all of social media wants Liverpool to lose so that's just how it is isn't it um but yeah I think with those options, if those options are true and those options of having Trent, having Genie and Hendo back in contention to be in the squad with no risks to further injury, you've got to have them in there. We have to have them in there. Milner is great and he's brilliant in every position as best as he can be and he tries so hard. But you notice a massive difference when it's Trent Alexander-Arnold isn't there. You know, it wasn't so different when... All right, Alberto Moreno was that left back, but James Milner was playing there instead because he was just much, much better as a footballer than Alberto Moreno. Trent Alexander-Arnold is a class right back and we miss him dearly. We already know now we're going to miss Joe Gomez for the next four to six weeks, which makes the tie against Bayern look really, the first leg anyway, look really difficult because we're missing Van Dijk in that one because he got suspended. So you could be looking at like a Lovren Matip centre-back partnership in that game, but we're not talking about that game right now. Thank God for that. Um, in terms of... Oh, I think my cat's having a little wonder. Are you having a wonder? Yeah. Am I being too loud? Am I being too loud? I'll give you some food soon. Um, so in terms of how we line up, I'm going to go with the fact that those guys will be in the team, and I'm going to go with um, Alison... Uh, what's his name? Andy Robertson. How do you forget the working-class hero's name? Andy Robertson, uh, Van Dyke. It will probably, probably be Matip because Lovren's not going to be back until Bayern, I think. I think that's the rumour anyway. And then Trent at right back. It would have to be. And then in midfield, I would have to, I'd have to go with Genie Wijnaldum, Fabinho, maybe even Henderson in there just to make us a little bit more solid. I think that would actually work out best. And then up front, or however they're going to work it, I think it would be Mane, Firmino and Salah. But those guys have to step up massively. This also comes down a lot to how we set up the team. If we go with a 4-3-3, like I think we've tried it a couple of times this season, doesn't work. For some reason, it doesn't work anymore. The way we've been playing in the 4-2-3-1 is the much better way to go. It seems that we're more defensively solid. We're able to control the midfield, which is where I think, again, like every single game, if you can control the midfield, 
then you will win most of three quarters of the battle in the game then it's up to the forwards to actually kick into gear kick some ass and score some goals and that is what i'm hoping to see from liverpool today i think we can see it from liverpool today I don't know what Bournemouth's last result was because I couldn't be bothered looking it up, to be honest with you. Not that I couldn't, right, not that I couldn't be bothered. I just forgot. I just wanted to turn the camera on, talk, and just get what I want out of Liverpool. What I'm wanting right now is a good performance. A good performance that can maybe settle the nerves. It's at Anfield. Hopefully the, the fans that can attend Anfield can make it a great place for the players to play and not a stressful place for the players to play. Not that they're going to fear play in there because of the atmosphere fingers crossed that can happen but hopefully the players actually give the supporters something to cheer for as well you can't just go there expecting the fans to cheer and cheer and shout your soul onto the pitch and if the players don't give anything back what is a fan meant to do there's only we will always get behind our team we will always get behind our players and the manager and as a club we will always stand behind everybody but it's a two-way street and it has to be given back to the supporters as well. So I can totally understand why some of the supporters maybe boo, maybe you know, chant some things in games. Absolutely understand it because the players have not been delivering lately. Yes, we've had defensive issues. Yes, we've had midfield and injury issues, all that sort of business. But we should be delivering much more. Now, if these guys are back in the team, Trent, Hendo, Genie, all that lot, if they're back in the team and ready to be selected, we should have a much more positive result. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Liverpool victory. That's just what I'm going with. It's going to be a tough game. Might be a little bit tougher just because of how, where we are mentally right now. But I'm hoping that they can turn it around. They can get a good performance out of the team. And fingers crossed, come the end of the match, hopefully we picked up three points and we can just silence, silence a lot of our own doubters, Reds fans, our own doubters, and some of the opposition fans. Now, you're never going to shut up the opposition fans. That's not our job. All we've got to do is go out there, get put together a good performance, and I feel that the points will come. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. How should we line up? What should the formation be? And are you excited for the game today? I'm excited for it, but I'm nervous. It's the great cocktail, the great mixture together of excitedness and nervousness before the game today. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoy your day and hope we get a damn good result today. Thank you ever so much for watching as always, and I'll catch you later.